This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Close to Home. But before that, this video is brought to you by Farmer G and the 901 Meister. Thank you for being farm barons. So the close to home map can be found at the farming simulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to your own sandbox. Now let's stop there. Let's pull back a little bit. Lots of us have referred to farm sim as a sandbox game, an agricultural sandbox game, if you will, where we can basically do whatever on whatever map we want and enjoy ourselves, right? Total freedom. What I never thought about was what if farm sim was in a literal sandbox? And that is exactly what we have here with close to home. In your backyard, you literally have a farm sim map in a sandbox. It's stunning. It's freaking incredible. I can't wait to show it off. Let's continue on with the description. Close to home is a map based on a real place found in multiple locations throughout the world. Your literal backyard in your literal sandbox. This map was originally started as a sandbox for the development of my own map creation and ideas as a safe place to mess around. Eventually, the idea of making an actual sandbox from the life, and it brings a different point of view to Farming Simulator. And for me, it breathes life into the imaginative worlds of farming and constructions. I, too, as a kid, used to roleplay in my own sandbox at home. For PC players, I highly encourage the use of the depth of field shader to enhance the miniature feeling. Now, that was the map author in the description. I am not going to be using that shader. I believe very much in showing you the product exactly how you potentially could see it without the use of additional shaders. Plus, for console players, you don't have that availability, so I don't want to show it off. This map contains 19 fields, 26 farmlands, various forests, two starter farms, the cow farm and a sheep farm, BG8, dairy, farmer's market, grain mill, silo, paper mill, sawmill, spinnery, and a rentable train. There is an asterisk that this map also does require the Platinum DLC. This map also has two required mods. So in addition to the mods, we typically just want to take a look at maps, which are additional field info, additional game settings, field lease, field calculator, and precision farming. We're also going to be making use of the Buildings of Norway mod, as well as the Sawmills pack. I will tell you, if you load this map up in a farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find that the main farms are built out exactly how you're going to see them here in new farm mode. The only exception is that you do not own the land, nor do you have any starting machinery in those alternate play modes. When you load into the map for the very first time, you may be a little concerned at the dark sky, but don't be a fear. You're okay. You're actually in a, well, kind of a sort of a cave if you will, but in reality, uh, I like to call it more of a bucket. So you're in a giant bucket or a giant scoop that is attached to a crane. A crane, if you will. One of those little sandbox cranes or uh, playground cranes that you might have sat in as a kid or your own kids sat in and basically dug around. I have to say this map does an excellent job with what I'm going to be calling, I guess, forced perspective. I'm no art major, but I think that's the proper term. With forced perspective, with the distant scenery being so large, and then throughout the map, we're going to find oversized kind of playground things just like this crane. There's going to be a shovel. We've got a boot over in the corner. We have a bucket. We have a garden hose, which is what is feeding the river on the other side of the map. It's just absolutely absolutely well done let's go ahead and take a look at the pda this map does include all the standard crops available to us in farm sim 22 and if we go ahead and take a look at our lands area 
You'll see we start off by owning Farmland ID 8. That is the main starting farm in New Farm Mode. It is 20. Oh, hold on. Farmland 8 is 73 acres in size. Okay, it is 20 some hectares in size, and they've been bought for $741,750 in any alternate play mode. It is the cow farm. We also have a farm built out over here, Farmland ID 24. It is 18.64 acres in size, and it's going to cost $188,570, and it is a sheep farm. Up here, Farmland ID 27, just under the giant crane, we have the BGA. You can buy this land for $80,610, although when you do buy the land, you do not own the BGA. You will need to buy that separate. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. The farmland lease screen shows us all of the Bible farmlands, how large those farmlands are. If those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included? Then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? So as you can see, we do have multiple farmlands that do contain multiple fields. And if we then take a look at our field calculator screen, this is going to break down the actual field sizes. We can then cross-reference those field numbers with the farmland lease screen to see how much any one particular item this field is going to cost. See, we start out with field 13, 14, and 15, 0 0.99, 0 0.67, and 2.3 hectares, respectively, with the largest field being right here at 4.04. Taking a look at our crop counter, we do have the standard base game crop counter available to us in Farm Sim 22. And if we look down through our prices screen, you will see that we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops that are available to us in FS22, as well as our animal outputs in eggs, wool, and milk, and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. Looking down through all of the base game productions, we once again do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game productions as well. We also have the ability to buy bulk lime, and we also have the ability to get rid of our stones down at the farmer's market. As we take a look through the platinum expansion, we also have the ability at the farmer's market to get rid of all of the platinum expansion productions as well. Then lastly, if you are playing with pumps and hoses, we do have the ability to also get rid of our separated manure. Taking a look at our vehicle overview screen, you'll see most of our starting fleet is owned, but we do have one particular item that is leased. That is the Samaz Jump 320. If you do not want to be incurring any leasing charges, you will need to make sure that you return this particular item as soon as possible. As far as the own items, everything is well-maintained and has zero operating hours on it. We do start out with the cow farm. And therefore, we do have a cow barn, but we do not have any cows actually in the barn. We do have contracts available on this map, and we do not own any production chains at the start. And lastly, this map does not have any collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the Massey Ferguson 5S145 small tractor. Then we have a Fent 724 Vario medium tractor. We have a Nova 330 harvester that is paired up with the PowerStream 500 grain header. We have a pair of Welger DK115 trailers, the Torino 3FX cultivator, as well as the Nordstein HK25 NS3030 seeder and power hero combo. We have the Amazon ZATS 3200 fertilized spreader. We have the GMD 8730FF butterfly mowers, as well as the GMD 3123F front mower. We have a Samez Z2840H wind rower. We have an Impress 125F Pro round baler. Then we have the 7850C wrapper. We have a still chainsaw also in our starting fleet. We have a Q7M front loaders. We have Power Fork Universal Bucket and Bale Spike for that front loader. We have a 900 kilogram front weight. And then we have the Torino 252. And this is also owned, sorry. And as far as our leased items, we have the Samas Jump 320, and that is a winter plow. And if you don't want to incur any fees, that's what you're going to want to make sure you get rid of right away. As far as mods and DLCs, we do not have any custom vehicles or implements on this map. I'm just going to quickly tab over to the starting farm. 
And just take a look at that. Like I said, take a look at that. Force perspective. Really, really well done. All right. It just gives you that sense that you are, well, living in the land of giants. Just waiting for a giant to come over the side of the uh, sandbox and just, you know. Or even worse, a giant cat. Oh, my God gosh let's hope these guys don't have cats look we got this we got this giant garden hose coming down here and that's what's uh feeding the river just amazing just completely mind-blowing creativity going on here All right, let's go ahead and take a look around the main farm here. Got some of our starting fleet right here beside the shed that we tabbed into. And we had our small tractor. We have our snowblower, our leased plow. Then we have our maintenance workshop. get out of here we have our farmhouse with our sleep trigger and then around the corner we have our cow barn so here we have our pickup point for our milk so we start out with some seed pallets as well some more implement storage we have some straw bales, some grass bales, as well as some silage bales. We have our slurry point around the back. We have our buy point for our cows, 65 cows in this barn. And then we have our dump point for our food. Indeed, Betsy, just watch out for that giant cat. And that is kind of the starting farm. Now, I do want to tell you that you can indeed sell all of the buildings here at this particular starting farm. Sadly, that does not continue over at the sheep area. And we will be talking about that in a little bit more detail as we get around to the drive around portion of the video. Let's go ahead and take a look at our build mode. Since we do have a couple of required mods, we do have lots of things listed here in the build mode. Most of them are from the buildings of Norway required mod. So the stitches is good, containers, couple tools and then of course our farmhouses from the buildings of Norway mod with respect to productions we have a sawmills pack and that is it we have the custom farmers market here included with the map and our animals we again have the buildings of Norway mod who provide us with custom animal pins Fairly standard decoration items. Other than the sawmill pack, we've got a couple other just deco buildings going on here. And then as far as landscaping goes, we do have some ground textures. These are all ground textures that we have seen before. Let's just go ahead and take a look at them. We have our animal mud. We have asphalt. We have dirt. Forest ground. Grass gravel and then a multitude of other shades of gravel and there we go as far as plants go we do have our standard plants and then we do have a couple custom ones included with the map here we have short grass then we have medium grass we have 
small dense mix we have that flower and then we have this flower and we ended up with room x here are the ground textures So a lot of these we have seen before on other maps. We have our short grass, our medium grass, our meadow mix, and then a couple of these white type flowers going on. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how the generic soil map is being applied to these fields. As you can see, the way the fields are laid out, we've got a lot of fields on the perimeter of the map, and most of those are gonna have multiple soil types applied to them. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of altitude. I don't wanna to do too much, because then might ruin the whole perspective thing that we've got going on here. You see we have our starting farm located right here. Go ahead and pull up the PDA. It's down in kind of the southwest corner of the map. We've got ourselves a large kind of sandbox shovel located right there. Have a, a boot off in that corner. Then over here in the southwest corner, we've got, of course, the, the hose and the bucket that we already mentioned. As we continue around, it's really well done. Really interesting concept. Really well done as far as execution. Here we have the sheep farm. And again, more on that here in a little bit. We have our farmer's market. We're going to come back to this area. This is actually the animal dealer as well as the vehicle dealer. Coming across kind of the center of the map, we've got this large mountain in the middle. The way the shovel has dug up the ground there and we don't have any grass or anything. Really well done. We've got our farm silo here that is actually set up as a train transfer silo. We have a fuel point storage there. We do have multiple rent train triggers all around. Now you may be noticing maybe a little bit of a hitch in the overall smoothness of the map. It may or may not be coming through. I believe it is because of how I have my graphic settings and how I have the LODs for these trees. It's just rendering all of these trees as opposed to having kind of more of a standard foliage rendering distance so i am getting slightly under 60 frames per second on average when we are taking a look at all these trees over here to the north west corner we do have a train rent trigger over here by this forest continue to make our way kind of across the northern part of the map now We over here to where we have our giant sandbox brain thing. This is where we started, of course. We have our BGA down under the legs. Also down under the legs, we have our sawmill and our paper factory. So with respect to productions, this map has five productions built in. We have a dairy, we have a grain mill, spinnery, paper mill, and the sawmill. There we have our BGA. Here we have our paper mill. And then we have our sawmill. Located right there. We do have bale and pallet storage as well. Coming across the eastern edge of the map, we have our grain mill. And this is the grain mill from 
the uh, the Norway map. We're talking about that production here in a little bit because that is some custom production. We have then our dairy. And we're going to make our way back over here once again to where we have the vehicle dealer and animal dealer triggers. So we have our dealer trigger here for customized sell, repaint, trade, and everything. We have our shop trigger. Let's go ahead and get our Mahandra so we can drive around. See where our vehicles are going to be spawning in at. A little area for our vehicles to spawn in it. But again, we have fairly small fields on this map, so not that big of a deal. I have an electric charging station. Right here by our animal dealer. Then here we have a fuel buy point. Now from the dealer, if we hang left, we're going to be able to eventually make our way up around to our starting farm. But for now, let's go ahead and make a right. So I want to come over here to our farmer's market and then over to the sheep farm. So here we have our dump point for the farmer's market. And remember, the farmer's market is going to accept just about every production that you could possibly have. Just a little in cab driving to see if we can really extenuate that whole... Uh, miniature within a sandbox experience. So here we have our spinnery conveniently located just south of the sheep farm. So we have our base game spinnery, we have our dump point, pout spawn point, and of course interactive icon here around the side. As far as the sheep farm, I've gone ahead and purchased the sheep farm. As such, we do have a farmhouse with a sleep trigger. We have a three bay garage. And then we have ourselves a sheep pen. So we have our wool spawn point. We have our food trough and then we have our sheep here on the side. 200 sheep in total. Now, I will tell you that unlike the starting farm, you cannot sell everything here at this farm. Specifically, what you can't sell is, for whatever reason, this fencing doesn't seem to be sellable. But when you sell the sheep area, right, the fence is going to be remaining. And then the three bay garage, for whatever reason, also sticks around. So let's go ahead and kind of go into the build mode. I can't sell a sheep pen because I now have sheep in here. You see, when I click on this, it says, nope, not going to do it. If I click demolish and I click on it, nothing happens. So I'm not really sure how that's coded or why it's coded that way, but I think it may be a mistake because, like I said, everything else at both of these farms could be sold other than that three-bay garage and the fencing around the sheep area. So to that extent, with respect to our scoring system, we're going to give the map... 0.75 for the ability to sell all of our basic, not our basic crops, the ability to customize our farms. I'm really, really willing to give this map a five, but uh, I cannot overlook the inability to, uh, to sell those items. For those of you that are maybe looking to completely customize your farming experience, you will have to work around those items. Make your way over here to the grain mill. I've also gone ahead and purchased the grain mill. Now we're going to take a look at the grain mill productions 
in more detail when we get over there. The grain mill is the only production on the map that is making custom things. All the other items are base game productions. I'd like to know what your all's thoughts are with respect to this map and of course it's it's interesting perspective on farming and it's interesting perspective on a sandbox quite literal sandbox so here we have our interactive icon at the front door and just like the base game there we have our dump point around back and the pallet spawn point over here along the side I mean, if anything, maybe I'd wish this map had a bit more fields going on to it. Feels like a whole lot of the map has been uh, has been reserved for uh, for just general landscape and deco. So here we have our grain mill. That's a grain mill. We have our dump point inside. We also have our interactive icon inside. So, with the grain mill, we have the ability to make wheat, flour, barley, oats, sorghum, and a new one to me. I never heard of this, but apparently it's a thing. I looked it up. It is indeed a thing. Asked the wife. She's like, yeah, I knew all about this. Totally new to me. Potato flour. 30 potatoes. They're going to make 12 units of potato flour. We then have the ability to do canola oil, olive oil, and sunflower oil here at the grain mill. We also have the ability to go ahead and dehydrate grapes into raisins. You can also press the grapes into grape juice. We have the ability to make sugar beet sugar, sugar cane sugar, as well as cereal, butter, and cheese, all at the grain mill. Quite the uh, quite the useful production. All that for like ninety thousand dollars, I think. Now, as far as where do you pout spawn? I'm pretty sure they spawn under the mill here. The thing is, it's not marked. And I really wish it would be marked. But it's not marked. This is the only place that logically would imply where your pellets are gonna or pallets are gonna spawn. So we're gonna come back to the last scoring metric player interactive areas being clearly marked in a little bit but i didn't see anywhere else around here that would really imply where your pallets are going to spawn that is a rent train trigger then we have another fuel buy point And then as far as our scoring metric of buildings where appropriately are used in the new texture technique as well as ground textures, I'm going to go ahead and give the map a full point there as well. One could argue that these, the sandbox objects, the boot, the bucket, the hose, the giant crane here are not really using the new texturing technique as best as I can tell. Uh, but for for the map, we're, we're going to give it a little slide. So here we have our BGA. Now, the one thing that I did not test earlier was if I buy the BGA, can I get rid of it? So we have our dump point for our silage. We have our dump point for our slurry. Do not own it. Okay. Oh, completely mistaken. I was completely mistaken. The BGA is only a sub point, not a viable item. Sorry for uh, completely wasting your time there. But I'm sure others may be curious and may be confused at that as well. And maybe, hopefully, I've clarified that for someone else. Now, as far as our paper factory, this is from the Platinum expansion. So we have our dump point. 
right here. We have our wind cell trigger as well as our interactive icon right there. And then our paper roll spawning is here hidden in the grass. And I really do wish that this was kind of covered in gravel or asphalt or just dirt because the way these markers are hidden in the grass, it was pretty hard for me to find those, even though I recognize this as the paper mill from the Platinum Expansion. And I remembered where the paper spawned at the Platinum Expansion. I was looking over here for quite a little bit before I noticed those corner markers. So with respect to player interactive areas being clearly marked, well, the lack of corner markers or trigger markers at all for the spawning of the pallets at the flour mill or the grain mill. And then with those being kind of hidden in the grass, we're also going to take off three quarters of a point there as well. We've got our stall mill. So here we have our dump point for our wood, our wood cell trigger. We have our interactive icon. We have our spawn point for our wood chips. We have another rent train trigger over here. Lots of possible storage over here for our forestry machinery. Then we have our bale and pallet storage as well. So guys, that is going to give this map a score of four and a half out of five. Like I said, I really, really wanted to give this map a five because of its creativity, because of its literal interpretation of farm sim as a literal sandbox and quite frankly as its execution being so darn good for that literal interpretation but when it all comes down to scoring maps we must uphold our scoring metric that we established way back before fs22 even released in the fall of 2021 so we did have to take off a quarter of a point for farms being customizable because of the three bay garage and the fence over to sheep farm and trigger and interactive areas being clearly marked because of the hidden markers for the paper factory and the lack of markers entirely at the grain mill let me know guys what you all think down in the comments below is this going to be your next gameplay and if so why Till next time, happy farming.